Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to another video. So it seems Deborah Chow has some words on Obi-Wan Kenobi Season 2. And I have a lot to say about this, of course, but let's get right into what you guys came for. And before we do, if you can hit the like button, that would really help out the channel in the video. So in the Kenobi show, which was extremely anticipated, we all got to see our favorite characters, Obi-Wan Kenobi and Vader, Anakin Skywalker returning. We got our boy Hayden Christensen returning with Ewan McGregor, and it was anticipated to be a really amazing show. There were a lot of moments in there that were really cool, but when you're getting Obi-Wan and Darth Vader back together, I mean, it's going to be pretty impossible to have a moment that would be lackluster. And lo and behold, there still were some. A lot of parts of the show for me were really just, well, let's just go right ahead into uh, what she has to say. And as I said, we'll, we'll get to what I think. It's been known that Ewan McGregor has been very adamant about wanting the Obi-Wan series to continue, and we don't blame him. The character's tragic backstory is even more elevated now, as he had to face down his biggest failure in creation, Darth Vader. The emotional climax of Anakin and Vader speaking to Obi-Wan was poetic, and heartbreaking. Though the story could easily be wrapped up, there are another 10 years of stories to be told, according to director Deborah Chow. She says, You always think you're going to end a series like this in some magnificent way, but instead you end up in a parking lot with second unit and hardly anybody there. It's always so anticlimactic, but as Ewan and I finished our very last shot on second unit and I was literally taking off my headphones, he was already pitching me ideas for season two. There's another 10 years with plenty of stories and I don't think it's off the board. It's a never say never situation, but we really did conceive this to be a limited series. There's 10 years, yeah, of course there's, there's more stories to tell. If they're going to do an Obi-Wan Kenobi season two, here are my thoughts uh, for Disney, for anyone that works at Disney or Lucasfilm. This is what I would like to happen. And I think a lot of fans can agree. And I think you'll get a better product. Make Hayden Christensen and Ewan McGregor both major producers. And I know you guys put them on the credits for season, for season one, but honestly, they need to have a much bigger role in where the story goes. I think these two guys are the guys who understand these characters better than anyone else. And if they've learned at all, if Disney has learned at all from their mistakes with Ryan Johnson overriding Mark Hamill's view of Luke Skywalker and where the story should go and how that catastrophe turned out <coughs> then they should probably take heed and notice that Hayden and Ewan would know best with what should happen with these characters as for Deborah Chow I really didn't like her directing at all the shaky cam BS there were so many moments that I thought were absolutely ridiculous you know not taking away from the fact that we got Hayden and Ewan back in Star Wars, which is amazing in itself. And I love those guys and I wanna see more of them, but I wanna see them shine. I wanna see them shine in the best way that they can. And I think only they know how to do that. Yes, they're actors, but at the same time, they learned from George how to portray these characters the best that could be done. And I say that because they were Anakin and Obi-Wan and they did their best and they did what George wanted them to do. And they know the character inside and out. And I believe the same is for Mark Hamill. I believe he knows Luke Skywalker inside and out better than almost anybody else next to George Lucas. I feel if they want to make a season two, get rid of Reva. We don't need to focus on new extracurricular characters that we just don't care about for this show. <laughs> The show is to meant to focus on Obi-Wan and Vader, and that's, that's it. it. We don't need to have Obi-Wan going off world. We don't need more people knowing about Obi-Wan protecting Luke. We don't need more people knowing that Anakin has turned into Darth Vader. These are all very secretive things that need to be kept a secret. And that is the one of the biggest key points in A New Hope in the original trilogy is that nobody knows these things. But as soon as you have these people <laughs> randomly throughout the galaxy knowing this very critical and top secret information, things become very, you know, loose lips sink ships, right? It, it's, it's, it's just a, it, a no, no. Joby Harold, I think was very, to say very nicely. And I, and I'm look, my clips get put on TikTok and, and Twitter or whatever, and people like to badmouth a lot. But at the end of the day, I'm extremely passionate about this franchise. And I truly believe that I am one of the only extremely passionate people about this, except, except for you guys that are watching and the subs and all that. But a lot of the people that are constantly like complaining about things I have to say about it, I don't really think they care that much about Star Wars, to be honest. And this will probably get clipped too. I feel like I'm doing my best to make sure that our story doesn't get mishandled and just mistreated, you know, by these executives and these Disney executives and these people just putting their grubby little hands into something that is so precious and so important when they haven't done their Star Wars homework and even just regular homework. Like you can't like slap a stormtrooper in the face and he's going to be all disoriented. 
or you, you can't hide a 10 year old in your trench coat <laughs> like you're in the middle of the whole empire on a freaking base in the middle of the ocean and expect no one to notice all of these little things like you can't chase a 10 year old and expect like i'm gonna get you <laughs> oh i didn't get you like what is this like what kind of a show is this you know, lightsabers bouncing and this and that. And I made a video about that. I tried to explain it, but I constantly feel like I'm doing damage control for all their mistakes. And it gets to a point where I'm like, can we just have someone competent that knows these characters and knows the rules of Star Wars to make these shows, especially when it comes to really important characters, vital characters in the story like Obi-Wan and Anakin and Darth Vader. It's another reason why I think that the Ahsoka show will be the best Star Wars anything that we've ever gotten since Revenge of the Sith. And I've said that before, but I truly do believe that, you know, this will completely overpass this to just beat the Mandalorian and how we felt about that. I think that this is a show that will be handled really well because it's by Dave Filoni, someone who actually knows Star Wars and knows the laws of Star Wars and the science behind it and the rules and knows how to film it, right? From George himself. And of course, the Clone Wars and Rebels. So I'm really confident in the show as for season two of Kenobi. Don't have him ever leave the planet again. Like that was already a huge mistake. Uh, as for, <laughs> like, like, <laughs> just, I still can't believe he left the planet, dude. Like, <laughs> like, like, like Yoda sends him there and it's like, oh yeah, you got to save Luke. You got to protect Luke. He is the last hope. Screw it. I'm going to go save Leia and I'm not going to leave anyone here to look after Luke. But I'm going to tell Reva in the end about this and she's going to find out about it and I'm going to let, let her be alive. Like, it's just, it to me, I, I'm just scratching my head here. Like, uh, like are they all smoking dope up, up there in the office being like, like, where are they coming up with these ideas, man? They're literally like taking a list of like everything you do and everything you don't do. And by accident, like they, they're looking at the, the wrong side of the list and they're doing all the stuff that you're not supposed to do. So yeah look if we get a season two no deborah chow no joby harold let's get someone like dave filoni on it i think please that would be you know dave should have taken obi-wan the first time but i guess you know that's that was kathy kennedy's choice right i do believe that there are you know another 10 seasons of the kenobi show for obi-wan and vader but it just comes down to competency it comes down to someone who actually knows these characters and knows the stories and i haven't really seen I haven't seen much of that since Disney took over. And that I really, I'm not being smug. You guys have no idea how important Star Wars is to me. And I catch a lot of flack, flack online for it. But I think it's from people who are just so la-di-da and like weekend Star Wars warriors that maybe want to get like free Disney tickets or something or be part of the clique of being inclusive for the sake of um, accepting everything that you get with a Star Wars stamp on it. And I just don't think that that is genuine and I don't think it's respectful of George Lucas. And I don't think it requires any critical thinking. It's just like, you know, uh, consume, be happy, repeat. Like it's Star Wars Disney talking that shit. You know, and I, I'm not, I'm not down with that. I'm born 1990 and I've been, you know, before cell phones, before computers. And like, you, you, you come up with your own consensus about stuff. You don't just follow the masses of the internet or whatever it might be. So, uh, you know, you got to stick to your convictions and Hey, if I'm, if I'm wrong, then well, that's, I'm wrong. That's, you know, that, but that's, my opinion and i really do think that there is a huge ton of stories that we can get for season two i mean we could go on qui-gon training obi-wan kenobi we could go on vader finding jedi throughout the galaxy trying to find obi-wan we could go with sidious trying to train uh vader with different methods and whatnot we could get a whole slew of different things you know <clears throat> there are a lot of very interesting stories that could happen maybe some actual meaningful jedi that could return you know what happened with quinlan boss they mentioned quinlan boss the whole idea of him saving children who are force sensitive with tala that was a great storyline in and of itself we could have a, even a quinlan boss story that could end up turning into an obi-wan kenobi season two eventually by the end of it uh or incorporating obi-wan in some sort of way but i think still at this point you know vader has a lot to learn and i think that sidious still has a lot to teach him or rather hold from him and i think the story in and of itself could be really beautiful and really uh, wonderful in the sense that it'll be adventurous and build upon these character arcs. And hopefully, you know, what I really hated about Kenobi was he's so given up. Like, I, I get it. Like, nobody gets it more than me, man. I understand what he's going through. I understand this time in the Empire. It's this constant, like, cookie-cutter method that Disney keeps doing where they just keep taking already established characters that George has created and then dumbing them down and making them, like, really disillusioned and giving them no hope. And then it'll take someone to give them hope or something like that. <clears throat> Usually some sort of a female character will give them hope and then they'll be like, 
okay, I got spring my step again. You know, I'm I'm Obi Wan Kenobi. I am not the last Jedi. It's like, dude, what? Like, what is going on? What? What is this? I'm just very frustrated and I, I I want answers, man. I want some better stories and I'm really hopeful that we're going to be getting that with Ahsoka. So yes, Deborah, there there is uh it's a never say never type of situation. I hope it is a never situation if you are going to be directing, and I hope it's a never situation if Joby Harold is writing. I think there needs to be new talent, and uh, I'm really not gonna shut up until there is. So I'll continue to voice my opinions respectfully, of course. You know, best of luck to Deborah Chow and Joby Harold in their uh, endeavors. I'm sure they're they're already very successful uh, and wealthy and and doing their thing in their profession and enjoying their life. But at the same time, you know, I feel like they're ruining my my favorite franchise. So <clears throat> they need to stop. Honestly, I think Dave Filoni, Aiden Christensen, Ewan McGregor could sit in a room together and come up with Obi Wan season two. I think that's the only answer if we're ever gonna get it. Until then, we got fan films and stuff like that, right? Love you guys. Let me know what you think about all of this. Do you want a season two or? maybe under some other terms, maybe someone else to do it. And what would you want to see in season two? Have a great day. Only a few more days until Ahsoka. I'm very excited to see you guys at six o'clock Pacific time on Tuesday. If you haven't seen the news, Ahsoka has changed the premiere date to 6 p.m. Pacific time on Tuesday, which is 9 p.m. Eastern Tuesday. So we'll probably start the watch party around like five o'clock or something like that, maybe even sooner, maybe even four. Ciao, love you, later.